decentralizing the web with Aleph.im. So most people here know me by the name Jonathan. Here I'm presenting as Moshe Malawar. It's, a, it's some kind of a surname for that. Um, so what is the what is it? It's called in the decentralized world as a layer two platform, as being on top of blockchain. Here we don't really care about that. What we are going to, uh, what is this project? It's a decentralized uh, application layer, like where you will store your data, uh, run application and things like that in a decentralized way. Um, why? Because our web is really too centralized today, and we want to decentralize the cloud as we know it. So let's have a look at this. This is a typical um, way that we know the websites today, which is like you get a user that goes to a website, and, and there is a database, and the centralized storage, or this can go really big with, with a lot of servers behind, but it's still very centralized. So <clears throat> here comes a solution that came from really smart people, which is called IPFS. Like, um, as the lecture before was emphasizing, um, file systems can be virtual. Like, uh, every file can be hashed, I think that everybody knows here what is a hash. And uh, basically, you can, get, you can get a hash from your file. And what if uh, everybody who has that file can ask for that hash and get it from anywhere on the web and get this unique file by his hash? Um, comes to that the DHT, which is Decentralized Hash Tables. Do you know what it is here? No? Okay, so like uh, if you know BitTorrent, Gnutella and things like that, basically they store ashes and say, okay, this peer has this ash, this peer has this ash, and this information gets propagated on the network. So you can get part of files from everywhere, like saying, okay, I want this file, who has it? And it allows for a full decentralization because you just enter at one point and you get all the other peers and then you, you don't even need an entry point and you can work on the decentralized network. Um, another part of the decentralization, which is important, is the blockchain part. Why? Because it allows to, to have something that is immutable on which we can have a history. Uh, the blocks are linked together using hash, like, um, a new block is minted, it refers to the previous one and, on, and so on, so you can't change history. That allows the currency, like Bitcoin and other that everybody here has, has, um, has heard about, I think. So there are some decentralized application solutions which are live today. You have like a front end, like we have before, with an API server that talks to a blockchain, sometimes to some kind of code which is running on the blockchain, which is called a smart contract. And for the storage, they use IPFS, as we said before. Um, there is a few issues with this model. First, there is delays. Uh, each action on a blockchain will take the block time. Uh, block time on Ethereum, for example, can be 15 seconds. And if you don't pay enough, it can be up to a few minutes. On Bitcoin, it can be 10 or to 30 minutes. If each action you do on, on an application takes that long, it won't work. Also the cost, like you can't expect your users to come and buy uh, some kind of virtual cryptocurrency to be able to, to, to like use your application. So that brings an onboarding stage, which is kind of hard too, because you will need to remember private keys to be able to derive a public keys uh, and to get an address and things like that. There is solutions, but it's not ideal today. And for the storage, as, as we say, they are using IPFS. The issue with IPFS is that if other people don't have your data, well, you can ask it, but nobody will have it. And uh, if the application provider goes down, um, all its IPFS ashes will just vanish and, and the data won't be there anymore. So. That's another issue we can have. So how can we organize something that works with all these existing things? We can have like off-chain state, like 
like like like like the data stored outside of blockchains and synchronizing it when we need it and providing free actions for for the user so so that they don't need to purchase a currency before being able to use a decentralized application and incentivizing um, IPFS storage of your files uh, through the, the, the network. Uh, by incentive, I mean that you can store application of other um, um, uh, storing files of another decentralized application and this other decentralized application can store yours and, um, and you can get some kind of monetary exchange between the two or simply get people uh, start storing data for money, things like that. And also, we don't want to be tied to a single blockchain because, because you want to be um, um, like interoperable between the chain. Like uh, if one user already has an Ethereum account, one user already has a Bitcoin account, uh, already has pri private keys and stuff like that, you want to be able to talk to everybody. Uh, you don't want some kind of um, separated states. So how is the Aleph network uh, organized? Like you have your user that goes to a front end. Your front end which is usually in JavaScript, but it could be written in Python or whatever, either talk di directly to the um, DHT-based peer-to-peer network. There is libraries in JavaScript to do that. Um, or through an API server of the network, there is a few, and the idea is that all the nodes will become API servers, so you can go on, on get other API servers on which to talk with. Or you could also have um, IoT devices like this one, which can talk to, to the network. Usually, they will go directly to IPA server because they can't run a full DHT on a small device. Um, so all those will talk to the Aleph network, which will talk to blockchain and, and synchronize that data with them and maybe move money and stuff like that. And there, there, there is an, a distributed and incentivized storage using IPFS and smart virtual machine, which will be kind of um, bits of code that you will upload to the network that will be able to run on, on do stuff with, with data for you. So let's check a, a simple example. You have, your, you have your IoT device, your DApp, or any data provider, for example, um, train times, um, values from from money exchanges, flight status, and stuff like that. IoT device can be whatever. On the decentralized application, can be any application you can do right now on the web. Um, each action means that a message is signed, so you can use any signature model of the supported blockchains, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Neo, whatever. Basically, if you don't care, you, you just pick one and start signing message with it. Um, you sign a message, you send it to the network. Basically, at start, um, the, the action is only seen by your API server or by yourself. Um, after something like 50 milliseconds, the, the data gets propagated. So. So any API server or any node will get that new part of data into its state. Like, uh, like if you use a key value store, uh, the value will get stored. I if you are running some kind of virtual machine, the virtual machine will have been run, unless it's, uh, its execution takes more time. Uh, the state is updated and indexed, and when you query it or, or if you subscribe to changes uh, through a web socket or something, you will get the changes after 50 milliseconds, um, more or less. So uh, the synchronization nodes will commit the message on the underlying chains, uh, underlying blockchains, and the message will be confirmed according to the chain's block time between 2 and 30 seconds for most chains, on Bitcoin, 30 minutes approximately. Um, and then you get the final confirmation, and once and once it's confirmed by the network, the data can't be rolled back. Means that once it's confirmed, um, this action really took place and, and you can't go back in time 
to to undo it unless you pass a new message that doesn't undo but but the history will be kept um, so the idea is, is to replicate the data and for scaling things uh, all the data isn't everywhere like 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 you, your file or your item will be stored for example once in america once in europe once in asia once once somewhere else um, but not more than that uh, there is some kind of ratio on how many nodes need to keep it so that you don't lose your data if if the nodes go down or or if there is some kind of net split or stuff like that and also um, pair decentralized application sub networks so that nodes can subscribe and say okay i don't want to like subscribe to the world network i want to subscribe only to this kind of data i'm only interested in IoT data that does this and this, so so your node can also do um, like um, like uh, indexing of the of the data um, for 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 example time series and sensors. You want to be able to do processing on this data, so so your node can store and index the, this data for you. Um, so what is the current state of the Aleph.im network? Um, we have a proof of concept testnet which works. I can show you a quick demo later on. We have storage, we have posts which are unique dat data posting, aggregates which are key value store uh, per, um, per address, like, like if you create a new account, you will, have, you will have an address, and you can have a key value store um, associated to this address. We don't have the virtual machines yet. I have a proof of concept of it, but I want to refine it maybe um, to use WebAssembly and things like that, so it's not there yet. And we are already connected to a few blockchains in, in two-way synchronization, which are which is NERS, Ethereum, and the Binance chain um, blockchain. So a few use cases. So uh, a few use cases. For example, if you want to make a, a social network like Facebook on it, you can do it right now, uh, because you will have posts, key value stores, um, for your profile, you will store your bio in the k-value store, your name and stuff like that. Um, for you know, and you can obviously store posts and have a reference to make comments and things like that. So this part uh, works. Um, you can also do IoT things already because you can store data as uh, as it goes on on, on create actions on k-value stores. Uh, so the device can react on it. There is a lot of other use cases. Um, once we have the virtual machine, we can do business applications on top of it. We can even have currencies, fungible and non-fungible tokens. Like non-fungible tokens, for example, in a game, um, uh, if, you will, if you win some kind of super rare uh, armor uh, in-game, this is a non-fungible token. It, it means that that not two of those will be exactly the same and, and you can have real ownership of it um, uh, on the network same for game you can make a decentralized uh, game engine where, where where the typical server is handled by the aleph.im network and you just talk to any api server on on your game client can connect to it and do actions it's fast enough uh, and also financial ex application like exchanges and things like that on low latency financial operations. Um, how is the data organized right now? Um, you have your message, uh, which is basically an IPFS object, uh, which, which has an IPFS hash uh, of of a JSON content, which is either an aggregate of, or a post. So, so so in your aggregate, you have a key, a value, and an owner. And same for a post, you have a type, a reference, um, e eventually to another post if it's a comment, an amend, or things like that on the actual content. And your message encapsulates that. And this is the message which, which will be stored on the blockchain and will be sent on the peer-to-peer -peer network of the Aleph.im network. And obviously a signature which prove, okay, I have the right to send this message. Uh, 
here is a, here is the message hash. Here is my signature, and uh, all uh, and on Aleph everything is signed and checked. So for the virtual machines, what is planned is to have um, is to have uh, states of variable state of the virtual machine, uh, which gets a hash and references the previous hash of the state. Uh, and they link as a, a di um, direct acrylic graph. I don't know if it says something to any of you. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, you have your first virtual machine, your second virtual machine. If one virtual machine calls a function of another, it will create a new state in the history of the second. And the second can call also a function in the first one. And, um, and you will get uh, calls between the, um, the state history of the automation. So it's a bit technical, but let's not enter uh, much into the details. For example, here is an example application, which is a blogging system, which is like uh, Medium, if you know it. Um, I can log in. It will just create a new private key, public key, and address. I don't care because to keep it, uh, I will edit uh, Jonathan. Oops. Save. Okay. So it created me a new account. I can go on on an article which is there and leave a comment, for example. Hey, yeah. So yeah, it's written here. And um, same for the actual um, Aleph.im website. This is our website. Uh, since I'm logged in here, you can see the address, I can edit every page. It's a CMS made as a decentralized application of the network. So I can go, blah, blah, do a preview. It will add on hello here. Okay. I will save and the page is changed. And uh, all the time, um, each time we did this, uh, for security reason, it's written on the, on the underlying blockchain every so often. Uh, you can see it written message on the Ethereum testnet here 22 seconds ago, and my last change should come here in a few moments. On the Binance chain too, if I refresh, yeah. Yeah, uh, 52 seconds ago and 17 seconds ago. So, so each of the underlying blockchain, this is the NULS testnet, uh, got some messages coming here. It's uh, business data, which is here. So um, the interesting part of it, as we said, uh, decode input data of the function on the Ethereum. You, you see here is my message. Um, I don't know if you can read this. So it's protocol Aleph version one content messages. So I have an item hash, uh, a chain, uh, the channel, the sender, the signature, as I said before. And um, if I copy this item hash, I can go on an I IPFS public gateway. If I have enough network, yeah. Uh, this is not on my network. This, this, this is another IPFS public gateway. And since we are based on IPFS, I can go and get the content here, which is uh, address, content, bio, blah, blah, name, Jonathan, key profile. So, so this is a mutation of the key value store of the user that we just created. And, and each of the messages gets stored on IPFS and by all the nodes which are interested in it. So um, the, good, uh, the good part is that it's kind of generic and any application which connected to IPFS can get this data later on. Same for pictures, posts, etc. cetera. Um, um, here is our repositories, uh, which we, we have a GitHub, which is Aleph.im. There is a few there, PyAleph, um, Aleph blogs, um, which, which is the blogging engine that, that, that you have just seen, and simple dApp, which is a very, very simple dApp, the simplest one you can do with Aleph, which is here. It's based on Vue.js, by the way. So thank you very much for listening.
And uh, for those who are interested, uh, I will do a workshop tomorrow morning. There is still a room available if you want to register about uh, using devices like that to write on the Aleph that I am network uh, in real time and using MicroPython on the devices. And um, if you're interested in the project, we are an open source project. We are open for any contribution. Uh, we have a Telegram chat room. We have a Twitter account. And here is my personal Twitter account for the Moshe Malawar name that you've seen here. So thank you very much. Um,